Your whole world is built on you're allowed to set your own course and do what you want to do. You're here and the school says, what would you like to be? We'll try and accommodate it. You want to be an artist, you want to be a writer, you want to be a teacher, you want to be a scientist, you want to be a mathematician. We'll try and accommodate your dreams. We'll make your dreams come true, just like the Matrix will. And then suddenly you find out that your dreams aren't coming true. If these tech billionaires are right, if that's really the case, serious, if that's really the case, how many of you would still say ignorance is bliss and you'd want to live in the matrix? If this has got nothing to do with you, you're just dreaming, as opposed to what's ever on the other side of the door. In other words, would what's ever on the other side of the door be worth getting out of the matrix? Give me liberty or give me death? Or do we just stay here and say, no harm, no foul? In German, we say Masch nicht. What difference does it make? Do I have any takers yet? Or just content? It's okay to be content. <clears throat> we want to be content, right? Right? Here in my ethics class, Mills is right. Pleasure is everything. If it's fake pleasure, who cares? I feel good about it anyway. What difference does it make? That's a great question. Now you're asking me for my opinion. So let me ask you this. That's a great question. It's a legitimate. If I was to tell, if I was to reveal what I believe, my will, desire, would that change anybody else's or is it just information? Are you sure? Are you? I'd want to get out. I don't think she heard me. I'll wait and see. I'd want to get out. I'm in charge. That's why I'm a teacher. I like being in charge. <laughs> now I would. I'd want to get out. This sooner or later, how do I say this? Sooner or later, well, I don't know that I can say that. Go ahead. I was going to say this ends sooner or later anyway, but I'm not so sure. Maybe you could be in this fantasy forever, although you keep getting older and older and older and older and older until the lights go out. and you got out and like the aliens or something was there or like some kind of person like what would you even do or like what if the planet was dying and like the whole reason you're doing this was to sustain life that's a great question what would you do let me ask you this that's a great question let me ask you this did you know anything before you popped out of the oven anybody want to go back or was it worth the journey You know, going through the birth canal. That was pretty painful. Ask Mama. That was pretty painful. <laughs> Not just for Mama. That was pain. You realize that your head, when you, when you come out of the oven, your head is in four plates. It's like, uh, if that's the top of your head, it's like a pizza pie. There's four plates, and they're not connected. And they're not connected for a reason. It's because that head is going to come out of an opening about, even dilated, about that big. So what happens then is these plates, they, uh, we call that crowning. And it makes it easier for the head to pass through a woman's birth canal. And then later on, it, and it solidifies. You have mothers, it solidifies. And that bone then, which is very, you realize children when they're born, you can take their legs and you can bend them quite a bit. Their bones are very malleable. They're bendable. They don't, they don't stiffen up till later when you need to walk on them. You can't be walking around like this. It, it's not going to work. But your, your, the he your head is like that, too, and it's perfectly formed in, in a four pieces. So it can crown so you can come out. But how many of you would rather go back? It's like an adventure, right? Why not come out of the womb and the matrix and see what's on the other side? Socrates was offered death and his buddies all freaked out and said, why don't you take isolation? You can be exiled to an island. He says, why should I be afraid of death? And he thought Epicurus was wrong. He thought there was something after. He believed in an afterlife. Maybe it's better than what we have here. If you have religious belief, almost all religions believe the next journey is better than this journey. 
no one likes it. And I, I don't know how to, you know, when you, when you go through death's door, it's kind of a weird door to get, if there is another side, to get through to the other side. How many of you know death is not user friendly? The, 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 the being dead part's easy. It's the dying part that's, that's traumatic. But then we assume that there's something there, and if there is something there, hopefully it's better than what we have here. Or we can take the other tack that it's going to be hellish, and why would you want to leave bliss? Cody. What if the matrix is not real? Say what? What if the matrix is not real? If it's not real, then you're on your own. Duke it out. Survival of the fittest. I don't know, are we? I mean, if you truly think about it, we know that our universe is expanding. We don't know what's on the other side. Well, that's what our perceptions and our instruments <coughs> tell us. True. And if those instruments are true, if. it is expanding. What's on the other side of that? It's a good idea. Maybe another pinhead. I mean, we assume, look, we assume we look at any, that's a great question, great question, and a great thought. We look out on the universe, and we see it as large. But what if, in fact, our whole universe fit on the head of a pin, and we're a whole lot smaller than we knew, but we perceive ourselves in spatial relationship to one another to be of a certain size. And then we look at the universe, and that looks really large, but what if the whole universe fit on the head of a pin? Say again? No. Is that a movie? Did I just write a screenplay? Horton Hears a Who. The spec. What's it called? Horton Hears a Who. Isn't it Dr. Seuss? So there is a movie. Yeah, there's like lights on the set. One little spec. I didn't invent that. Okay, give credit where credit's due. And what if at the other end of it was another pinhead followed by another pinhead and another pinhead and another pinhead? And what does that say? And what if instead of expanding, because in our little universe it's expanding, but this whole thing is coming back? Of course we don't know, do we? So go back to Locke's point of view. The only world we know is the world we know. We have no way of knowing anything outside this world, even when we have experiments, even when we think we have proofs of things. Look, string theory says there's no such thing as matter, people that this is energy and waiting. If I torch this, it becomes heat. Heat is energy. Your energy. <clears throat> We're kind of nuclear reactors, you know, little mini ones, you know. Atoms have neutrons and protons and electrons, and those are all electrified. Those are, those are, those are energies. We're like a little battery. They were right in the matrix. We're just a little energy-producing body. And this is the only thing we know. So if someone tells us, well, we really are in a matrix, then that's something we add to our knowledge, trying to understand how we live in it. Go ahead, dear. Doesn't that make you question, like, even, like, if we are in a matrix, and if you die right now, like, do you die in real, real life, or do you, like, wake up? I don't know. It's a great question. There's no way. And that's part of the problem is we don't. Not being able to find out. And we don't know yet. Maybe we do. Maybe we, yeah, it's a great question. But that's what life's about. How many of you have answers to your lives? How many of you know where you're going? I know where you want to go. How many of you know where you're going? How many of you know your final destination? How many know your level of success? And we're content, aren't we? Because we're in charge. That's what we want to believe. And there's nothing wrong with that belief. Even if you get somewhere and find out that's not the right place, or this didn't turn out the way I had planned. Or maybe we wake up from the matrix and find out it's something else and we're about to be lunch or breakfast or dinner for somebody. Oh well, life happens, doesn't it? There is no answer. Remember we started this the first week? Philosophy has great questions, very few answers. It's hard to arrive at the truth. And that's what last week and this week, how do you know what's really real? Well, you might as well accept the fact that maybe you can't. We can get some knowledge to work with, and from that we get some understanding, and maybe you can get some wisdom. But in a heartbeat, someone discovers something new, and your whole world turns upside down. And we have to live with it regardless. It's irrelevant, really. Go ahead, Cody. But you would think, too, if there is a higher being, and we are actually in the matrix, why would they allow us to think that we're in the matrix? Why would they allow us to have the thoughts that we have if they're controlling it? 
great question, too. One of them may be that maybe you have to be 20 years old before you're big enough to eat. <laughs> and maybe being able to think outside the box is what keeps us content with being in the box. This is a great question. I don't know why they'd want to. Of course, I can take this and say, well, what if you were in control of the matrix? What would you allow people to think and do? I was going to say what you kind of said, where like thinking out of the box is why we believe that we're not in a box type thing. Like, it's a great if insight. If you weren't allowed to think, like, oh, someone talked about a matrix and then they died the next week or something, like, then you'd be like, oh, maybe there is one because every time someone talks about it, it's on TV. Mm hmm. What did you say? Or it could be like the Blade Runner. If you ever see the Blade Runner, I think you get to be 35 years old, and they, I think they have the right movie, and they put you in this auditorium, and this white cloud comes down, and you go up, and phew, and everybody was allowed to live till they were 35, and then phew, and <coughs> what they did is they turned you into Soylent Green food. That's where their food source came from. But you had 35 years of fun. Go for it. Do whatever you want to. But as soon as you turn 35, and and they made it kind of into a religious experience, you know, and people would come. Whoa. I mean, I, I don't mean to be. I'm, I'm not being rude. I don't mean it that way. But you know, many religions have that. You know, you go you go someplace else, and people rejoice. It's a better place. That was a really good lunch, don't you think? if you don't know any better. So what, what's the purpose of this besides I'm glad, Cody? Well, <laughs> we're we're going to go down farther the rabbit hole. Sure we are. So, um, I'll go with you. Okay. <laughs> Watch your seatbelt, everybody. Yeah. Uh, so why would we have natural disasters? Why, why would we? we have, in essence, like we were talking about the other week, with the earth cooling and getting hotter and causing more What if it's, that's a great, that's a great question. What if it's part of the program? Let, let me put it this way. <clears throat> I'm, uh, how do I say this? It has occurred to me that politics is about distracting us from what's really going on. What do you mean you're a Democrat? What do you mean you're a Republican? And then we spend all our energy distracted by people's beliefs. And that engages us and perhaps distracts us enough not to notice the cat going by twice or other things that might be relevant to figuring out what's really going on. And it's built into the system, the distractions. I mean, it's all plausible to me. I think we're greatly distracted. Cell phones, they're distracting, right? Relationships that fail, they're distracting. I mean,